And our pastor here in studio, we have with us once again, Pastor Peter Mbugwa from Church of Restoration Mutui, Mutuini. Yep. Mutwini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Karibu sana Thank to you the so show much, once again. Great to have you. Yeah. All right. So I think we can dive straight into it and mm. just kind of look at Saul's background mm. um, and touch on some of his strengths, his weaknesses, as we also prepare to look at the lessons Good. that we can draw from him. Good. Um, one of the things that I've come to learn um, over time is that God has the main agenda for everything. And for God to fulfill his agenda, he works and partners with people. And Saul is one example of a man that God partnered with in fulfilling his own plan mm -hmm. on the land. So the background of this man called Saul is that he is from the tribe of Benjamin. He's from a very wealthy family of a man called Kish. And Saul is this kind of a man who didn't have a vision of becoming a king. Actually, Joyce, what mm -hmm. Saul was doing, he was busy looking for some lost donkeys. Mm -hmm. But in the process, he found himself in the house of a man of God called Samuel. Mm -hmm. And God had given some instructions to Samuel that there's a man that is going to send his way who would actually be the king of the land. So Saul was able to be the king in the land for, say, about 42 years mm -hmm. because he became a king at the age of 30 mm -hmm. and he reigned 42 for about 42 years. Okay. So that's a part of the background of this man. And some of the strength that I see in him is that he was literally appointed by God himself. Mm -hmm. Saul was not appointed by men. Mm -hmm. Saul was never voted in. Saul never campaigned to be the king of the land. Right. But God, in his own wisdom, decided to appoint him to become the king of the land. Mm. But the other side about this man, though appointed by God, we see another side of him whereby he displays some high levels of weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And Saul, and, and I think we all know that there are a couple of things that corrupt men. One is power. Two is money, and three is fame. Right. So Saul was a very good man. But the moment he got into power, I really don't know what happened. Because the same man who was busy looking for donkeys, the same man who appears to be quite humble, all of a sudden, this man is now kind of disobeying God. Mm. There are two incidents where Saul disobeyed God. The first incident is when God said to him, you've got to go and finish all the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. But this man, Saul, decided to spare King Agag and a few of the animals and a few of the people. And God was not impressed with that, mm -hmm. though it is God who at some point had appointed him to be the king. Right. But in the process, he disobeyed God. Mm -hmm. And then there's a second incident when King Saul was supposed to go into battle with the Philistine. Mm -hmm. And it was the custom of the day that before getting into the battlefield, a prophet of God was supposed to come in and offer a sacrifice, mm. which symbolized that we are not getting into the battle free, battlefield by ourselves. We need you, God. We need your help. And that was something that was a preserve of the prophet. But you know, Joyce, uh, this king, Saul, waited and waited and waited. Mm. And at some point, he felt like Samuel is actually not coming. Mm. And because of his impatience, he decided to do that which was reserved for a prophet, right. though he himself was a king. Yeah. And shortly after making that sacrifice, Samuel appears. Mm. And that's why we get, I mean, many of us, we talk about it, that um, obedience is better than sacrifice. Right. Because this man quickly went into the sacrifice, but the quick move to the sacrifice was another quick move to disobedience. So he was doing the right thing at the wrong time and in the wrong way. Absolutely, absolutely. Because the sacrifice thing was actually a God idea. Right. But 
as much as God has got ideas on how things need to be done, he describes the formula on the way it needs to be done. So this was supposed to have been done by someone, okay. but he went ahead and did it by himself. And because of all these things, the same God who had appointed him to be the king mm. rejected him mm. as a king. Yeah. And I think for me, that is a real unfortunate state of affair when at one point God has appointed you and at the far end, God is actually rejecting you. Absolutely. And that's, I think, a great tragedy of his life. And Indeed. sadly, the thing we remember him for Indeed. as the guy who lost favor with God when God had actually bestowed it upon him. And hopefully none of us find ourselves in that sort of situation. But we're going to take a break at this point. You can be reflecting on uh, what has been shared so far. Triple one, triple four, triple one again is the SMS line. And uh, when we get back, we're going to be diving some more into Saul and even just looking at some the other lessons that we can apply to our own lives from his story. We'll see you after this break. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Full Circle with Joy. Shout out to all of you who are engaging with me on Facebook. And uh, Iman James, I see you. You say, I want to... <laughs> okay, thank you for watching and you're passing your greetings to some friends there, including Milka Wanjiru, Asante Sana. I also have Dekevian Mnyama from Ngong. Thank you for watching. Jerry Lynn Walker as well. Uh, Munika Samuel Wafura... Waf wow, Wafura. <laughs> Wafula. Uh, good morning to you too. You're tuned in from Bungoma with your wife, Mercy Wanjala, and your daughter, Tracy Nema. Thank you all of you for watching the show. I have Maureen Menta. You're tuned in from Mushatha, and you say the devotion segment makes you wake up early. Wow, that's great to hear. Thank you so much for being a part. Um, Bede Asli, Asante San as well. You're tuned in from Machakos. Dead and Juguna, tuned in from Gilgil Nakuru. I do appreciate you as well. Moses Mongai and Susie Mark. Asenteni Sana as well to you guys remember you can keep sending in your feedback to at switch tv ke on instagram at switch tv kenya on facebook and twitter and you can also sms uh, to triple one triple four triple one all right so we're here with pastor uh peter mbugwa and we're going through our devotion for the day we've been learning about saul and uh sadly the biggest tragedy of his life is that he was actually favored by god and then because he decided to do the right thing <laughs> at the wrong time and in the wrong way among a host of other challenges pride jealousy <laughs> just to name a few um he actually lost favor with god and and how sad i think that should scare every single one of us that if god has actually put his hand on you and decided to bless you made you king from nowhere yeah you were tending sheep <laughs> he was actually looking for donkeys looking for donkeys <laughs> And then God makes you king and you lose it. Yeah. Oh, man. May yeah. God help us to not Indeed. lose his favor. Indeed. So let's draw some other lessons mm. from his life. Good. Um, there are a couple of lessons that we can pick up from the story of this man, uh, Saul. And I'm sure yeah. the reason why we need to learn about this is that we can avoid those pitfalls. Um, one of the things is that God can promote anyone right. into any position of power all any position of influence mm -hmm. this man there is no any single biblical evidence before he became the king as like he had ambitions of becoming a king mm -hmm. but god in his own way because god had his own agenda of this man he just decides to propel him into a position of power and influence mm -hmm. so i think a lesson number one for me is that God is not a respecter of persons. That's right. Anyone can be promoted by God into a position, into a place of his personal choice. Amen. The number two is that every position where God positions us, God has expectations in, in terms of the standard of our way of life. Mm. Because every position that God gives, there's a set standard. There's an expectation that God has that for this position, then I expect you to live like this. Mm. For this position, I expect you to live like this. So in real sense, 
your way of life on the basis of the standard that God has set maintains you in that position. Right. So Saul is a king promoted by God. Then God set a standard on how he needs to operate. So, but Saul fails mm. in maintaining the standard that was divinely set. Although in many occasions God was giving Saul even a second chance, a third chance and all that. But I think he was corrupted by the power. Mm. So he lost the position because he could not maintain the required standard of wow. that position. Wow. The number three, God can reject anyone even though they are kings. Mm -hmm. Because it is God who positions and the same God who can remove from positions. Right. We shouldn't get ourselves so, um, like we feel like we're indispensable. Right. For example, Joyce, just by the fact that God has called me to be a pastor, I shouldn't um, abuse that opportunity that God has given me. Mm. I should be able to maintain my standards that God has set. Otherwise, God can move me away from that mm. in the sense that the grace that God has showered upon my life, the favor and all that to operate in that capacity is taken away. Mm -hmm. So I can still occupy the position called a pastor, but actually in the spiritual realm, I am not. That's right. You know, Saul was rejected as a king, although he still continued to reign as a king. So right. in the physical, he appeared to be a king, mm -hmm. but in the spiritual he never existed anywhere. And as that far reminds as me of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who by societal standards were the most religious Absolutely. people. You know, they Absolutely. are the ones who are in the front of the line going to heaven, <laughs> yes. at least according to yes. them. Yes. Yes. But even Jesus himself, you mm. know, called them a brood of vipers and all manner of things. Very, very unfortunate, I would say, Joyce. And I think one of the things that we all need to do is to be very deliberate in pleasing God because it is him who has called us mm. it is him who has appointed us we shouldn't forget that we can actually be away from that right. even though people are saying mr. King or mr. pastor or prophet or whatever the question is and the big question is what is God saying about me mm. what is God saying about you because by the end of the day is we are there to please our God and then the, the final one, the fourth one, and I think for me this is key, is the realization that God has a David in waiting. Wow. Yes. I mean, it's really the reality that God will never run out of options. Mm. Men can run out of options. Mm. And sometimes we think just because I occupy this space, nobody else, I am the best, I can only be the only one. Now, believe you me, Joyce, God has a David in waiting. And this David is actually not even in state house. Mm. This David is a shepherd boy who is even forgotten by the father mm. when someone invites a whole family into the homestead. The father, Jesse, is like, these are the only people that I have. There's always a David mm. in waiting. So we need and I need to continually keep my focus on the one who called me. Otherwise, I will lose my space. And David will come in because yeah. he's there. God so, will never lose options. Absolutely. Yes. So whereas we're thinking because of our titles and our accomplishments that yeah, God, you need me. It's uh, actually the other way around. Mm, mm, God doesn't necessarily yeah, need yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. We absolutely yeah. need him though. It's actually a very, very big favor for us to partner with God. But actually God can do with someone else. That's right. I mean, God can do with anyone. So I That's think a scary it's thought. a very it's a very humbling. It's humbling. It's very, very humbling yeah. when I realize that God has given me this opportunity, has given me this privilege. So I should take it with a lot of humility and, and serve God mm. with that humility. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I shouldn't take up a God given position and mess up the agenda of the same God. Because God placed me for a particular purpose. But if I'm using the office to mess up the same purpose of God, mm. then God will get you out of the way. Yeah, because we can't mess up his plan. Yes. Yeah. That's we'll true. mess up our own plans. Yes. But we cannot mess up his plans. Mm. Wow.
Yes. Someone here is uh, Lily from Thika is saying, you know, the spirit of God left Saul and was even replaced by an evil spirit mm. that tormented him. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, it's it's a real sad affair when you think of it. Yeah. But I think for me and from you, favor to Joyce, torment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me and you, Joyce, and everybody else, um, this story should actually be a wake up call. Mm -hmm. Um, just to realize that um, there's a particular way we need to walk with this God. Mm. Otherwise, if we don't, we will lose the position. We, mm. will we will lose the favor that God has given us. And, you know, we cannot buy favor from God. It's, it's a free gift. Mm. Yeah, You mm. can't say, I'll give my tithe and God is going to just to yeah. keep quiet about it. Mm. No, God has set his own standards and we must follow those standards. God in his own greatness, he's not going to bend to fit in our shoes. Yeah. We must be flexible enough to fit in his shoes. Mm. Mm. That's my mm. take, Joyce. I, I want you to just really speak directly to our generation today because I think the, the sad reality is there's many of us who are souls mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and and can be souls mm. i think our potential to be soul is very great Huge. right um because when we think about the things that really matter today mm. it's those things you've talked about mm. the 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 three yeah, what yeah. did you what did you title them as the downfalls yeah, yeah, of, of yeah, man yeah. money yeah. money power, power and, and fame, fame. Yep. Mm. and that's literally what many mm. of us are chasing mm. today mm. but we see that that really puts Saul on the highway down mm. to you know, a lack of favor mm. with God. Mm. Um, I, and maybe there's something to, to just really emphasize to our generation today about really keeping our eyes focused on what is the true value of life and what really matters at the end of the day, mm. which is God's approval. Absolutely. I keep telling myself, it doesn't matter if a million people are screaming mm. and shouting my mm. name, mm. if God isn't. Mm. It, those million people, are not, they're not going to take me to heaven. Did you know? It won't matter. Jace, God is not democratic. Mm. He is theocratic. Mm -hmm. Meaning, a million people can shout at me or you, but if God, that's not the direction of God, yeah. I will still retain my favor with the same God. Mm -hmm. And the other way around, I can have a million people behind me and saying, Pastor Mbogwe, you're doing mm. a good thing. Mm. But if on the other side, God is not happy with me, yeah. God takes the day. Yeah. God takes the day. So I think going back just one step, just for a second or two, is the three areas, fame, money, and power, these are blessings. Mm -hmm. These are just blessings. Right. But we should never lose sight on the one who is the owner yeah. of the blessings? Because the current generation is changing the focus from the creator to the creation. Come on. Now, the creation is only sustained by the creator. Mm. So if we lose our focus and maintain it on the creation, we lose the next part of our lives, wow. which is anchored in the creator. Mm. So. As much as God has blessed us, and because God will bless us, and he will continue to bless us, we must maintain our focus on him who is everlasting. Wow. Wow. How, how do we do that? Now, a couple of things, but quick one is, very, I mean, very, very simple. I would say the word of God has given us directions on how to please him. Mm. So we find the mind of God in the Bible. Mm -hmm. I, I always say the Bible is the mind of God in a print form. Mm. So it is the manual that is giving us direction on the way of living. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we, we connect ourselves to men of God and people of God who can teach us the word of God right. and the way of the cross. Right. Because at the cross, there's no pride. Mm -hmm. At the cross, there is no self. Mm -hmm. At the cross, I mean, everything's about that. And then finally, the realization that we are there to please God. It's not yeah. about us. Yeah. It's about him. Yeah. So for me being a pastor, it's not about me. Mm. It's about God. Mm. So when we have that kind of um, 
getting back to our senses and realizing that we can't do without this God. So you just submit to this God and to his authority and to his direction. Wow. Let me tell you, Joyce, it's not easy, but it has got to be a deliberate and a, something that you make a choice that right. I decide that this is the direction that I need to take. Right, right. Wow. Mm. Because so, this body is very proud. It is. Oh my goodness. It you is. know, it, it, it it just, it just, it's, it's at home when, 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 when it's all about the self. Mm -hmm. But when it's about others, there's, there's a bit of fight within mm -hmm. the individual. So God wants us to rely on Him. Absolutely. He wants us to derive our sense of worth from Him, Absolutely. not from things, not from people, mm -hmm. not from power, not mm -hmm. from authority, mm -hmm. and even just the idea that we cannot outsmart God. <laughs> I think this guy tried it too many times. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. no way we're ever going to outsmart no, God. No, no, and no. I think a big lesson too is God expects total obedience, mm -hmm. not partial mm -hmm. obedience mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. excuses. Mm -hmm. You know, God is very absolute in his ways. You can't say, but I got 80%. <laughs> he means like, did you do it or did you not do it? It's not about 80% yeah. yes, of the way. And you know, just, just to echo what you have just said, you know, Saul, when God questioned him through prophet Samuel, why did you spare Agag, right. the king of the Amalekites? And why, why am I hearing those animals? And Saul came out quickly and said, my people decided to set apart some of the best animals for sacrifice. Right. You know, sacrifice sounds to be part of You're worship. You're trying to tell God, but this is what you want, sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we saved them for you. Yeah. So it is doing the right thing like you said, but again, way. you also do it the wrong way, so you lose out favor with God. So we've got to do the right thing, and we do it the right way. Yeah, and this to me has been, if there's any lesson that I'd encourage every young person to learn, it's that one. And I had to learn that at a young age, that the end does not ever justify, justify the means. means. I know the world tells us different. The world says, you get there, and then at the end is when we'll figure everything out. No, mm. if you're gonna follow God's way, mm. the end does not ever justify the means. Yeah. Ooh, what yeah. a word. Yeah. Thank you that so much, Pastor true. Mugwa, for coming today. Thank you. Uh, really blessed to have you as always. Mm. Uh, I just really enjoy how you break down the word for us. But I want to ask you to pray for us. Mm. Uh, may God help us turn indeed, our hearts. You know, indeed. I don't want to be a Saul. Indeed, <laughs> um, I, I don't want like Kumi, there's a David <laughs> just waiting, waiting over there to, waiting. for me to fail <laughs> to come in. <laughs> no, I, mm. I, I want to obtain God's favor mm. and keep it mm. and, and fulfill that which mm. he's called me to do. Just before I make a prayer, Joyce, mm -hmm. just a quick one. Our God is very merciful. Absolutely. In the sense that we realize our shortcomings and just present ourselves to him for forgiveness. Mm. I think God was waiting for that opportunity from this man right. seeking forgiveness. Yeah. Because David was worse off That's than right. Saul. But David was a man of a very repentant heart. Absolutely. He would go to God, God, I'm sorry. Yeah. God, I'm sorry. Yeah. I wish personally I can actually get to that kind of level where yeah. I can humble myself and tell God, forgive me. Yeah. God is a God of a second chance. Amen. Mm. Please do pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless your holy name this morning. Thank you for the opportunity to hear your word and being very specific, the lessons that you are teaching us from Saul. And we pray that none of us, including our viewers, will find themselves in the same trap of Saul. But we shall be very, very careful to keep our eyes on you who is the creator and the owner of everything else. And we pray, God, that you'd help us be able to know blessings are only blessings and they are not there to replace you. Mm -hmm. Help us to enjoy what you have blessed us with, but we maintain our focus on you. Father, we thank you even for the, the next part of this show. We pray that it will be very helpful mm -hmm. to the viewers. We bless you and we honor you. For this we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. 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 Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor Mbugwa, for coming. Always a pleasure to have you. Flora from Thogoto there saying, uh, good morning, Joyce and Pasi. Such a bright, blessed Wednesday. And she's inspired. And she, she says, thank you for encouraging our hearts. Joanne from Kikuyu says, I really like the Bible character series from September or since September. It's been making me to reflect on myself and on changing some areas and emulating certain traits. That's wonderful mm -hmm. to hear. Mm -hmm. Well done to you, Joanne from Kikuyu and uh, I don't know how, if people can get in touch with you yeah, sure, they can sure, follow sure. you somewhere yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I am happy to provide my phone number okay um, just like you said I'm Pastor Mbogwa from the Church of Restoration and I'm on 0721-201-653 one more time 0721-201-653 Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes. God's blessings to you as Amen. you carry on with the rest Amen. of the week. We hope Amen. to have you back again soon when God's given me the opportunity, I'll be here. <laughs> Fantastic. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to take a break now. Coming up next, we're going to be touching on Breast Cancer Awareness Month and uh, talking especially about screening. Very, very important to do so. Triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. And I'll be back after this.